Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off discussing an exclusive. Hopefully I can solve a mystery, and it concerns Intel's DG2. There has been a wide range of performance numbers that we're hearing concerning DG2, and hopefully in this video I can solve exactly why we're hearing so much conflicting information. I'm sure many of you are familiar at this point with Intel's desire to get into the graphics market. Not just for games, of course, but also in high-performance computing as well. It's extremely lucrative for obvious reasons. And so we've heard, well, a lot about Intel's plans. Raja Kadori has shown off various engineering samples for both server as well as, well, what looks like some type of gaming-focused product. And given he was running tests on it, which seemed to conclude that, yes, it supports variable rate shading, hardware-based ray tracing, mesh shaders, makes your waffles in the morning. Well, it's shaping up to be rather good. But by far one of the more confusing aspects of this isn't even the specifications. We've seen that it's got 512 execution units. We know that it's got 256-bit bus, although this is for the higher-end SKUs, and this has been leaked multiple times in the past at this point. So we've got a fairly good understanding as to what the SKUs are, at least in their basic form. But performance. <laughs> That's where things get quite interesting. When I was first hearing about Intel's plans, it was that they were going to be aiming for the mid to high range, although I didn't really get specifics, only that it was going to be feature-packed and it was going to be reasonably similar to NVIDIA or AMD's Silicon. But then later on, I started to hear that it was going to be around RTX 3070, possibly even RTX 3080 levels of performance, but that seemed to be kicked back to say, no, not quite 3080. More like, think, 3070 Ti, I guess. But, yeah, then a lot of conflicting information started to come my way, as I was then being told that this is almost certainly untrue. At best, you are looking at performance which is going to be RTX 3060 Ti. Now, you can certainly write some of this off with a lot of reasonable explanations. The most obvious one is engineering samples. Like, engineering samples are not the best when it comes to things such as clock frequency. They could have bugs in their logic. And drivers, well, drivers can make a huge deal. If the drivers are not optimized, then, yeah, it can, of course, absolutely ruin, wreck, trash, annihilate performance. And this is particularly true with different games, because I was hearing that certain games would lend themselves much better to Intel's architecture. However, I've recently been told by a couple of sources a lot more information concerning Intel's plans. And I was told that Intel have actually put in an order now for around 3 million uh, memory chips, and those are going to be delivered for Q4 of this year, which I'm sure you can probably start to figure out the release timing for the product. Now, of course, the number of memory chips doesn't necessarily tell you the number of products which are going to be created, and we'll get into the specifics of the products in just a moment because it's actually the most interesting part. However, you can start to see that we could be seeing 200,000 units, 400,000 units, 500,000 units, again, depending on the bus. We know it's 256 bit. But there are also much narrower buses, 192, 128. But we can start to see, you know, 400,000, 500,000 units would certainly be possible, probably more, depending on how they decide to allocate all of the different memory and what SKUs they focus upon. And you can start doing the maths on that. It's not really that important for this video. What is more important, though, is that I was told that for the launch anyway, <laughs> yeah, this is the kicker. It's not a graphics product for your PC, it's mobile. That's right. This is actually a laptop-focused silicon. Now, this is not to say the DG2 will not find its way into discrete graphics cards that you can just plonk into your, uh, um, you know, like this. It goes bonk. That's the technical term. Anyway, yeah, so it's, it's not to say that that's what if Intel will not release eventually. They certainly will, but the focus initially anyway does seem to be the mobile market. And there are a lot of reasons behind this internally from what I understand at Intel. 
The first is that it's a lot harder, at least in Intel's opinion, to release a discrete graphics product given AMD are just doing AMD things with the RX 6000 series at the moment. And, in, and well, Intel would also be facing a strong competitor from NVIDIA, the RTX 30. So, you know, it's, it's really difficult for Intel to launch and then just execute everything perfectly. Because I was already hearing that Intel probably were not going to be launching with an AIB partner, for example, Asus. Instead, they were possibly going to be doing everything alone. Although, at least when I was hearing this, it was kind of up in the air. So basically, what Intel want to do, again, according to what I'm hearing, is to basically offer an I plus I solution. So a little bit like AMD, of course, can offer an A plus A solution. Currently, if you are going to buy an Intel laptop, there's a good chance it's going to be paired, if you're buying a higher performance one, of course, with something like an RTX 3070 mobile or whatever. And this ultimately means that Intel are losing out on a potential windfall because every piece of silicon that they sell, you know, in terms of processor, they could also sell graphic solutions as well. And just by how you know, Intel provide parts in terms of, you know, to their partners, again, like Acer, Asus, Dell, whomever, it would just benefit them to do this. Now, you also, going back to the performance side of things, suddenly start to realize how a lot of this stuff makes sense in the grander scheme of things. Because, you know, we were hearing about RTX 3070 plus levels of performance, but bear in mind the specification difference between the mobile, for example, RTX 3080 or 3070, and the desktop RTX 3070 or 3080. You can easily just look at some graphs online, but here's a quickie that I found, although the configurations are albeit different. But again, you can kind of get where I'm going with this. Now, how confident am I in this information? Reasonably, because I've been told it by now a couple of different sources. And again, it just, to me, just fits so well. And of course, something fitting doesn't necessarily mean it's true, because we all know that just because something makes sense on the surface, it doesn't mean it's really the explanation. And that's really annoying that there's an ice cream truck that just happens to be going by my place at this point. Anyway... Yeah, so I am believing that this is most likely what Intel will do. And I don't think it's a bad, you know, thing um, for Intel's perspective. Because I'm hearing that initially the drivers were kind of a big problem for Intel, but they have since improved them considerably. And there were also some arguments that I was hearing that they were kind of hot and power hungry. But this seems to only have been an issue when they were being cranked to higher clock frequencies. And credit to someone, I don't know if they'd want me to name them, so I won't. Uh, it's not I don't want to credit them, but I don't know if they'd want me to name them in this specific thing. But they were kind of telling me, hey, maybe it's got something to do with, you know, V slash F, you know, voltage, power, frequency, as a voltage and frequency. Come on, I got there in the end. And maybe that could be another reason, which is one of the reasons I started to, you know, kind of, tug at some of my sources and kind of ask them about this stuff. And I believe that most likely, you know, given again what I'm hearing, Intel basically found that their silicon is actually not too bad in terms of, again, power consumption, those other characteristics, if it's not clocked to the stratosphere. And I think that it starts to kind of, you know, the, the wheels fall off the wagon if it goes much higher, which is what they would probably have to do to compete in desktop which gives them more opportunity to tweak the silicon and then kind of release a new variant eventually for desktop. Maybe it would be almost identical silicon. I don't know. The main reason I have against this being true is it seems contrary to what I was hearing regarding the price of two to three hundred bucks. However, if you think about it, given they eventually will release discrete GPUs, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not, or it could be inclusive of other parts, maybe in terms of laptop costs, who knows, maybe it would cost them like 200 bucks, for example, for the laptop manufacturer, depending on bill of materials and all of that stuff, who knows, it becomes really convoluted if you start going down that road. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to be very interested to see whether this is true or not. Honestly, I hope it's not true, 
because I do want Intel to compete in desktop as well. So I'm hoping that my own rumor is false, but I am leaning towards the fact that it's true. And also another very interesting story, this one's not an exclusive, and it concerns Windows 11. Now there's a whole litany of Windows 11 news at the moment, simply because, well, Microsoft have kind of revealed it. And I'll probably do a lot more coverage on Windows 11 soon, but by far one of the more interesting stories, at least in my opinion, is the fact that, you know that whole thing of direct storage, which I'm sure you'll agree, if you're a PC gamer, it's really important. Um, again, direct storage is probably not going to be a big deal tomorrow, but direct storage, simply being able to leverage your um, NVMe drive to its fullest capacity or capability, excuse me, and to really be able to crank out insane speeds, which of course is going to be very important for open world games and just in general, to be honest with you, in a couple of years' time. Well, basically, that is going to require Windows 11. And I don't necessarily have a problem with this because if you are a Windows 10 owner, you will be able to upgrade essentially for free. So Microsoft are already starting to kind of prepare themselves, or sorry, prepare for uh, rolling out betas so you can basically be, you know, kind of a, a Windows insider, download a build and start testing it out. But obviously there are not exactly games at the moment which take advantage of direct storage. So you also have to take that into consideration as well. Again, Microsoft are kind of preparing itself or rather the operating system for things going ahead. I think that, you know, I've said this multiple times at this point, just in general about tech, but the last couple of years definitely feel like they are almost setting things up, if you will. Um, like, for example, increasing core count on, you know, the, the, the mainstream platforms, uh, introduction of ray tracing and upsampling technologies. It kind of feels like we're preparing for the next leap forward. And we've saw, we saw this multiple times in the past, when, um, you know, if, if you've been around the block a time or two in, uh, you know, the early days in like the late 90s and early 2000s when we started to see that hardware TNL being introduced in graphics chips and then of course, uh, this is a little bit later, we started to see like unified graphics architectures. So, you know, this is certainly not the first time that we've started to see these, the or we have seen these kind of like major advancements. Do you remember when Windows just was not really that good at all with like multiple threads slash processors? And of course then Intel and AMD were really pushing uh, processors like the Core 2 and the Athlon Xs. So yeah, I, I kind of feel like it's like that again. It's really exciting, honestly, at least in my opinion. And, you know, this is kind of nudging an exclusive I had yesterday concerning um, just a, a graphics cards availability. Again, I'm hearing that there's going to be a blip in early July. I'll link that video in the description of this and probably at the end card as well. But graphics availability, I think, is going to start to get much better, which is good. Because ultimately, it's like, you know, if stuff's really cool, but you can't buy it, what does it really matter, right? But with that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. Leave a likey and a comment because YouTube engagement and YouTube engagement is key of life at this point. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.